certainly welcome everybody tuning in who was watching Xavier pull off a big time road victory. Welcome to Holiday Hoops Giving in Atlanta. Mike Morgan, Dane Bradshaw, the headliner matchup. The second of three that we have on the ESPN networks. It's Memphis against undefeated and 11th ranked Auburn. A ton of juice in the building for these two teams. And what promises to be one of the best matchups of the day. Give and go, Dipsy do layup by DeAndre Williams, the oldest player in college basketball at 26. And that's why you can put Kendrick Davis anywhere on the court as a scorer, as a facilitator. He might have to get his teammates more involved, Mike, in this game with starting point guard Alex Lomax out with two early fouls. You see the list of unbeatens in college basketball. Houston is about to go down to Alabama, so that would leave Auburn in an elite group of nine unbeatens left in college basketball, over 350 Division I teams. Auburn comes in 8-0, Memphis at 7-2. Both teams are NCAA tournament teams a year ago as Davis, a little too sloppy with the basketball. Kendrick Davis, a huge transfer, one of the top-ranked transfers in all of college basketball. He was the player of the year in the American with SMU, and when he went to the portal, Memphis came calling, and he decided he wanted to play for Penny Hardaway and the Tigers. A little bit of a shooting slump, but you feel like this is the game where he gets out of it, a big stage marquee opponent. You know three and Gray's ready to play. And that'll bring us to our first media timeout. We got juice in the building. We got electricity on the floor. And we got a sensational matchup. Their defense is a little bit ahead of their offense, but that doesn't mean they don't have star power and big-time scores on the offensive end. But points are going to be tough to come by because you nailed it. These are two suffocating defenses. Westry, the freshman, left it short. They're still trying to get him into a rhythm, but they think he's going to be a star guard in time. Baseline drive and a two-hand flush. Wow. Keate Kennedy, the senior. Just a great job of getting that ball ripping baseline immediately as the closeout was late. When I say senior associated with a Memphis player, forgive me if I sound redundant, because they are chock full of seniors and fifth-year seniors and grad transfers. They got a veteran bunch. And no coincidence that Penny Hardaway says this is the calmest he's been right. the head coach for the Memphis Tigers. That's right. You see all the seniors on that squad. There's Auburn doing Auburn things. They block a ton of shots. Number one in the country is Auburn with eight and a half blocks a game, but that one drew a whistle and a foul. It's amazing how Auburn defends, but watch this. Yeah, and you see Dylan Carbo coming over for that block, and that's how you're going to have to attack the rim. You better go in there to go above the rim or go in to try to get a foul. You try to go up there soft, he's going to get hit against the glass for both of these teams. Jalen Williams is going to exit the game with his second foul. We already have three players in this game yeah. with two fouls, more for Auburn and Lomax for Memphis. Free throw up and in for Malcolm Dandridge, another senior who Penny Hardaway told us last night he is our X Factor, not only for this game, but really for the rest of the year. Three ball, Johnson, you don't want him to heat up if you're Memphis. He can be electric when he's on. The bigger the crowd, the bigger the stage, the bigger his game. I mean, he loves this type of environment. Davis takes it strong, absorbs the contact, and gets the finish. Yeah, if you're Johnson, you got to turn him a little bit. He just let him have that straight line drive. No help came over. Good read by Davis. What a find he was. Reigning AAC Player of the Year. Another three. Another make for Auburn. It's Alan Flanagan. Well, that was all Dylan Cardwell. He flashed to the ball when the point guard was in trouble, then made the perfect pass on the kickout. This is an Auburn team that's undefeated despite struggling. Look at that move. Kendrick Davis, the fake, the take, and the make. He is electrifying. I mean, he's just outstanding with the ball in his hands. Uh, before that highlight play by Davis, which is worthy of another look. Yeah, here's the... Th Three ball by Johnson just gets it in transition and they're gonna dare him to shoot the ball more of the driver And then here's Kendrick Davis Sir with a bag like that. It won't fit in overhead. You got to check that in mr. <laughs> Davis. This this gets the truth man yeah, He's a special talent 
averaging over 17 points. Last year, he averaged over five assists a game in the American, in spite of being one of the top scorers in the league. A, a do-everything guard. He came to Memphis already with over 1,500 points on his resume. Westry swings it to Caldwell up top, back to the freshman. Caldwell looking for Flanagan. Johnson, heat check, pops out. KD Johnson, an Atlanta product. You know, he wants to shine here at the State Farm Arena in Atlanta. Tapped around. Memphis will get a second possession out of the deal. Open three. Got it. Davis, look out if he ignites. He's already got seven. Lee. He'll get the free throw attempt here. Preseason all SEC second team. KD Johnson, former Georgia Bulldog. Gets a friendly bounce on the first one. He was eighth in the SEC last year in steals, so that it's just an offensive weapon. You can heat him up on defense too, and that's the signature of a Bruce Pearl team as he splits the freebies. And so far, the defense for Auburn, they are holding opponents to 58 points a game. That's the 14th best total in the country. And no question, this is the biggest test of the early season yeah. for the Auburn Tigers. Bruce Pearl knows it. His team knows it. And the Memphis Tigers off to a really solid start. And as you mentioned, both these teams so active defensively. Westry lost the handle. Boy, Memphis... So active defensively. And that's your, your, your big man, Williams, stepping out, being able to guard another point guard. Davis robs it down low in traffic, carving out space and getting the finish is Dandridge. Yeah, a lot of tough twos. I think both coaches are going to instruct their team. When you get it low, go ahead and put it up because offensive rebounding is a key for both of these teams and actually a weakness if there's any on the defensive side for both. Largest lead of the game. It's Memphis up by five. Seven minutes into the action here from Atlanta. Johnson probes the baseline. Kick out to Westry. Met by Davis. Driven, pull up, can't get the bounce. Davis, little shake and bake around the screen. Lob pass, not that time. Dandridge, though, there for the loose change. This is Kennedy. Transfer from UTEP, and Kennedy got bottled up, but also got held up by Westry. Yeah, it became a loose ball situation there. Westry really didn't have to grab him. I mean, it was a loose ball. At worst, they get it back with a dwindling shot clock that puts his hands on him. This is one of those games I really have respect for our officials because <laughs> you got a ton of quickness and both teams are ferocious defensively. So you, you have to have that balance of what's a good whistle, what's an overly aggressive whistle. Let them play, but don't let it get out of hand. And here's Alex Lomax, who's got to be aware of that whistle. Starting point guard with two. Lomax, there you go. Penny Hardaway, so good on the sideline out of bounds plays. And there you see a two coming into this game that this is exactly what he needed was a marquee opponent on a big-time stage, and he has not disappointed early. He has risen to the occasion so far. Mike Morgan, along with the pride of Memphis, a man who was freestyling some Mr. Big during the break, Dan Bradshaw. <laughs> I had to put you on, man. Oh, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that. Could be a rap battle post-game. You just never know when you've got Dane Bradshaw doing a Memphis game. Baseline drive, playing again, blocked by a whistle and a foul. On Memphis. I would have liked to see Flanagan not double clutch that. I thought he could have finished above the rim. Gets the whistle anyway. Watch how Flanagan was already high above. I thought he was just going to cram this one, but decided to double clutch it. Helps him get the whistle, though. If you enjoy a, game, a good game of rim protection, yeah. you, you've come to the right place. There is nothing easy at the rim against Memphis or Auburn. And, and as a player, you have to know when you get past your man, it's not like most games where, hey, hardest part is getting past your man, and then I'm going to have an opening. No, sir. In this game, you got to be ready to get in the lane and jump stop, kick out to an open shooter, or attack the rim all the way like playing. 
And Alan Flanagan, of course, the son of the Auburn legend and current assistant coach Wes Flanagan. Flanagan, it just didn't feel, we had a great coach with the uh, conversation with Coach Brill. Didn't feel like himself last year coming off the injury. Different player this year. Oh, yeah. He's so much more comfortable. He's picking and choosing his spots so much more, whereas last year he was always kind of forced into the issue. But another deflection for Auburn, and the issue there is now it becomes a dead ball situation. Mm -hmm. Here's Lomax just posting up again. I'd like to see Memphis maybe set some screens for him. A little bit better pressure set. We have everybody moving on the inbounds that time, and it does come into the hands of Williams. Good adjustment, and what a luxury to have a guy like Williams that you can say, hey, instead of being our big man down low, I need you to bring the ball up for Inside, banging bodies and a strip. There's a steal by KD Johnson. Auburn in transition. Johnson, pump fake out to Green on a three. Kicks off the iron, and over the backboard, that will not count. It does it in the driveway in a game of horse. I'm, I'm giving you a letter on that one, Dan. Yeah. No luck here. Wendell Green, they call him Logo Wins. He's got that type of range. And he is not bashful. Does give Auburn a chance to set up again in this pressure. Auburn again keeps the heat on. It, it's, it's amazing. I mean, you and I go back because you played with Bruce at Tennessee. I remember calling some of those games from Bruce at Tennessee. I've never seen a coach put so much emphasis on denying inbound passes. Yeah, and, and he's lessened that over the years on the 94 foot pressure. So this is a little bit more specific to this game, you know, with, with the uh, cylinder rule and all these other things that have eliminated some of the traffic, plus the positionless basketball. You've got so many more ball handlers on the floor. Quick hands, Flanagan on a steal. Here come all the, the Auburn Tigers, and a great take by Wendell Green draws the foul. I love the turn down by Green there. He could have settled and pulled from three. He says, no, you know what? The defense is on their heels. I see an opening where that rim protection that you mentioned to was trailing the play. Well done. Second foul on DeAndre Williams. Green, who started his career at Eastern Kentucky, or making his way to Auburn last year, made an immediate impact for this Auburn program. It, it's you know, there's so much turnover now in college basketball. You could say this about just about anybody, but you think about it: you lose two first-round draft picks. You lose Jabari Davis, who's one of the best players that has ever come through the Auburn program. He's a one and done And then, of course, you lose Kessler, who's Walker Kessler was. <clears throat> the National Defensive Player of the Year, a shot-blocking machine. I think everybody was wondering, okay, well, how much pressure does that put now on these guards to be more productive offensively? Yeah, and don't forget, I mean, the ability that they had to just get in the lane and lob it up to Kessler, where they had so many opportunities just right there, right. that just don't exist anymore. There's a careless, unforced error by Memphis. And six turnovers already on Memphis. Penny Hardaway, like he told us, much more calm now. You know, when he first got the job five years ago, everything was a little bit new, adjusting from AAU and high school to college basketball, talked about establishing a culture. He says, now I've got a veteran group. I've been out of the while. I'm calm, man. Everything is smooth sailing. We just got to go ahead and produce the way we're capable of. Mike, I called his first road game at LSU, and they joked, they said, man, we've never been on the road with the team. We just realized, hey, what kind of curve are you doing? Like, <laughs> we need to take phone. What do we have to do? So a learning experience for all those guys at the college ranks. But he loves his team right now. However, despite having so many veterans, a couple of rookie-type mistakes to pass two possessions here. Sloppy basketball by the Memphis Tigers. That is four straight possessions with a turnover for Memphis. And again, Auburn can do this to you. They will continue to heat you up. And Bruce Pearl told us point blank, we have got to force turnovers and we've got to take good care of the basketball. Johnson seeking contact, did not get the whistle. Yeah, good no call there. Runner off the mark, top floor for the rebound, Jalen Williams. Here's Johnson on the push. Surveys. Drives and gets the finish. Patience by KD Johnson. Yeah, there are no pit stops in his game. I mean, he is point A to point B. Lomax finds an open Williams on a three. Left it short. 
And off the hands of Green out of bounds. It'll be Memphis ball with 9.56 to go. Well, this Auburn team is built differently, but the pace of play continues to be fast for this Auburn team under Bruce Pearl and Katie Johnson. I mean, when you tell players you want them to be a straight line driver, he's the definition of it. <laughs> he knows how to get to the rim as quickly and as efficiently as possible. Kennedy checks in for Memphis. Along with Lomax, DeAndre Williams. And Jaden Hardaway, the son, of course, of the head coach, Penny Hardaway. Lob pass into the corner. DeAndre Williams. Oh, clear out. Now, this match right here for Davis. Davis sees it, throws up the floater, missed it, tapped around, and finally reeled in by Broom. Yeah, I, th I thought he could have played with it a little bit longer. You know, get Broom back on his heels. Two on one. Johnson got it. One point lead for Auburn. The Tigers on an 8 0 run. That's a push, offensive foul on DeAndre Williams. And Katie Johnson is the heartbeat of this team. I mean, this guy plays with such passion, enthusiasm, and emotion. And check this out. You don't think he's excited to play? He loves the big stage. The bigger the game, the bigger his heart just keeps growing. But I gotta tell you, this kid just brings it all the time. You want your players to be excited to play when they step on the court. That is never an issue with KD Johnson. Yeah, even when we talked about there's no lack of juice in the building. This is by far and away the best crowd of this event thus far. See a whole lot of Auburn fans. Again, just a couple hours away from the campus. And Memphis fans always travel well. It's it's loud and rowdy in here. But that juice has translated on the floor as well. And KD Johnson, one of several players in this game that bring it night after night. Absolutely. And for Memphis, they got to go a little bit deeper than they expected. You got Dandridge with three, Williams with three. And so here they are with a lineup they have not used that often. Flanagan bobbling the handle. <laughs> we mentioned Pistol Pete earlier. It's one way to do it up, I guess. Flanagan finds Johnson. Johnson. Tough three, contested that time by Kennedy. And then Lomax coughed it up. Bodies on the floor, squirts out onto the wing into the hands of Hardaway. Hardaway, block foul, block foul, called on Green. Chuck Jones on the whistle. Well, Hardaway, his confidence is pretty high as well. He's coming off a career high last game. And just takes the contact, finishes off the glass. Green not able to get there in time. And one. At the line, shooting to Memphis, number 25, Jaden Hardaway. Jaden, one of four Memphis products out of, on this Memphis squad. Richard Senior. And the first one pops out. Twenty one twenty Memphis with a one point lead. Flanagan thought about it. Step back three. Tough shot. Yeah, Bruce Pearl doesn't like that one. And then Memphis just steps out of bounds. I mean, that is now nine turnovers on Memphis. Again, a lot of it is caused yeah. by Auburn, but some of it. It's just a little bit of sloppiness. Uh, I think Memphis fans are thinking, I, I thought this chapter was behind us. Right. That was with Bugaboo last year. They've done a better job of it this season, but so far in this game, too many freebies and empty possessions on the other end. Here's Memphis last year, made it to the second round of the NCAA tournament. Gave Gonzaga a, split, a scare. And I got everybody excited about this year's team. First basket for Jalen Williams, who Bruce Pearl said they really need a big game out of Jalen Williams tonight. And missed the last one with COVID after the tournament in Cancun. Another turnover by Memphis. 
A one-point game here in, in Auburn's town in terms of collecting great high school basketball talent. I mean, there is a pipeline of guys that Bruce Pearl has been able to recruit, several of which are now in the NBA. As an Atlanta native, Dane, I mean, it's quite frankly, it's been amazing how he's been able to dominate recruiting with two major programs right here in Georgia and Georgia Tech. On the lip reading from my city, did you give him the benefit of the doubt? Not the <laughs> I, I like what you did there. No, but you're right. Like No 99 card to, today. When you try to recruit Memphis on the other end, the city of Memphis, man, like, Memphis almost has a first-round refusal on a right. great player out of Memphis. Atlanta, hey, you can come in and you can infiltrate that a little bit. There's not this tradition of all Atlanta kids go to this school, that school, and Auburn has taken full advantage of that to where now all of a sudden, you know, Auburn's almost like one of those schools like Memphis is of being able to have their territory. It, it really started when Bruce Pearl took the job nine years ago. He found some pipelines and he stayed with them and sells the fact on the fact that you can go ahead, get in your car from Auburn or from Atlanta and make it to the Auburn campus in about two hours time. Good sales pitch. Well, Mike, if you, one thing is you got to get them. Yeah. But the second thing, they got to perform or you're not going to keep getting them. And they That's performed right. at Auburn. And Hardaway with another big basket for this Memphis team. And that's a contested three. He came in shooting 35% from behind the arc. Back and forth we go. Memphis on top. Auburn can't respond. Here comes Davis. Ahead to Hardaway. Hardaway, crossover, drive, off the window. No, Hardaway gets it back. Missed the second time, and there's Caldwell. He lost it. How about a third attempt for Hardaway? No, sir. Hardaway, rather a steal that time by Kennedy. And a three. Just how they drew it up. Well, uh, and really, that could have been a five-point. That's really a five-point swing. I thought Auburn was going to be off to the races for two. Flanagan not aware of Kennedy. Great job by Kennedy. Westry, beautiful feed as Caldwell drops down the hammer. Yeah, good, good use of pump fakes by both teams. Uh, a very underrated fundamental trait that you got to have in this game. When you got shot blockers flying all around, they're ready to come beat it up. You better take advantage of it. Davis with a response off the window, a friendly kiss. Just how good is that? Be able to go that full speed, slow down enough, teardrop off the glass. Nine points, four rebounds, two assists already for Kendrick Davis. Flanagan at the top. Into the corner and back up top with nine to shoot. Might have to be a settle here. There's a three on the way. Back iron. <laughs> That's a free ride, courtesy of Alex Lomax. I don't think Caldwell bought a ticket. Oh, they're calling out Lomax? Oh, wow. Well, you know, if, if Lomax has his palms up and his elbows out, then they got him on the wrap. And I thought it was a textbook blockout and an easy call for the official on the other side of it. Well, as Lomax shows his hands and has his elbows right. up, when he put him down, that's where it put the referee in a position to have the call go against him. Tough break for Memphis. That is a real. That would be the third foul on Lomax. We had a similar play like this with Appleby, the small guard for Wake Forest, boxing out yeah. Williams of LSU. And he just grabs a hold of him on the back, and, and yes, 44 goes over his head. But I think the the referee saw it differently. If, if you, like you said, if you keep your hands yeah. empty, right, you gotta show your hands. It, it's just like when you go a, a dribble penetrator. If you put your hands into them, the rest mm -hmm. of them assume you're fouling. And that one, officials had a better look at it than, than I did, and I think the correct call. Well, that is a double whammy. The call and the third foul on Lomax, who's by far and away had his best year in a Memphis uniform, and is such a We'll go back to that adjective, calm, that Penny likes to use. Well, he is a calming influence for this Memphis team. And, and that's the risk when you play a guy with two fouls. But I like the move by Penny Hardaway. I think too often coaches say, okay, you got to automatically go sit the rest of the half. And it's too hard to get in a rhythm in the second half. Plus, you don't know how many minutes you left on the table at the end of the game if the kid doesn't foul out. So I, I like the move despite the tough break for Memphis.
Caldwell struggles at the line, <laughs> but he'll get the benefit of the doubt on the bank free throw. He's 50% on the year. He's 50% there. Full court man to man from Auburn. Memphis again struggling. Dane, to your point, you got to move, right? Yeah, you, you got to move. And I think a lot of times people want to have their best passer taking the ball out. I'm not sure Lawson's their best passer, plus they don't have a lot of move. Afternoon of hoops. He is Dane Bradshaw. I'm Mike Morgan. We've got a great day of hoops here in Atlanta. The second of three. LSU and a thriller beating Wake Forest after trailing by 20. That was the game that preceded ours. We had that one just a couple hours ago. This one. A lot more fans and juice in the building and an electric matchup between undefeated Auburn and the Memphis Tigers. Shot clock down to seven. Where do they go? Davis is the answer. Davis for the pull-up. And it'll be Auburn basketball. Wendell Green's like, I know that move. That's my move. The step back three defended well by Green on that one. Oh, wait a second. Now I'm seeing one official saying a push on Flanagan. So a foul against Auburn, a one-and-one -one situation, as that's 18 fouls. Well, it hasn't been a very clean first half. It's been an active one with a ton of effort. And they're going to get Flanagan on a touch foul there. I'm not even sure Memphis was expecting it. But I'll tell you what, if you're Penny Hardaway, you feel pretty good right now. you got a four-point lead. The turnovers that have been unforced, the foul trouble you're going up against. I think that Memphis team has played pretty well, all things considered, and been able to get an edge, especially in the paint when they're a plus 10. And they're beating Auburn at their own game on the glass, plus 10 on the glass, many of those offensive rebounds. Auburn exhibiting patience on the possession. Green, beautiful dime, dropped off, and a foul. As Chris Moore cut to the basket last second, attacked the iron and drew the foul. Here's what I love about Green and, and Moore in tune and execute even better by your team. Moore knocks it down. Don't forget tonight at 8 o'clock on ESPN on the app. We'll have the 88th annual Heisman Trophy ceremony presented by Nissan. The four finalists, all quarterbacks, Stetson Bennett, Max Duggan, C.J. Stroud, and Caleb Williams. That'll be tonight at 8 o'clock Eastern Time. Kennedy breaks pressure. But another fortunate one, right? I mean, yeah. dribbled off his shoe. He's lucky to get it back. That's going to be offensive. Plowing in and barreling over the defender is Chandler Lawson. Uh, great job by Moore. Slid over. He certainly got there in time on this one, it looked like, and takes it in the chest. You better be able to penetrate under control, play off two feet in this game, or it's going to be a tough night for you offensively. You see, Memphis only averages 13 turnovers a game already with 11, but again, that's what Auburn can do. You're a big Ken Palm kind of stat guy, analytics guy, right? I've read one of the more interesting numbers that I've seen. If you include steals and blocks, Auburn forces a steal or a block 34% of their opponent's possessions. That's one of the top marks in the country. Three ball knocked down by Chris Moore. He's a different player, more confidence this year. And oh, by the way, he's from West Memphis. Yeah, if you can get a few of those to go in, then all of a sudden you don't put so much pressure on your defense to be perfect the way you alluded to. Westry had a steal. Memphis got it back and then a foul against Auburn. Alabama knocking off undefeated Houston earlier today. Missouri is having all they can handle in their ball game to keep it posted there. So Auburn one of nine left. Could be less than that after this ball game as Lawson drains the first free throw. Transfer from Oregon, six foot seven with a seven seven wingspan. One of the several players over the last few years that prepped at Memphis East High School, part of three straight championships, including one with Coach Penny Hardaway. He is one of four brothers that played at Memphis. Yeah, the Lawson family, those were legends in Memphis, and what a run they had at East High School under Penny Hardaway ultimately led to this job. 
It's been a little bit of a chaotic, dramatic tenure so far, but as you mentioned, a much calmer year right now under Penny Hardaway, especially with all these veterans. Maroon just wanted some help and instead tossed it right in the hands of Davis. Davis on the attack. You know he's going to finish. He does. Three-point opportunity for Kendrick Davis. I, I can't tell you how good that is. I mean, Kendrick Davis just explodes in transition. He beats everybody off the court. But watch how he slows down at the end and says, come here, let me get this and one off you. And he seeks out the contact and then finishes through that. Well, you are exactly right. He looks at Jalen Williams and says, come on, yeah. come on, I'm, I'm, I'm right I mean, here he for you. He could have had the easy two. He said, no, I, I want to get through the hard way. But he did come up limp, but he, he's had a nagging ankle injury a little bit. That, by the way, is the third foul on Jalen Williams. So we have two players with three fouls. Make it three. Dandridge and Lomax, the others. You see, Kendrick Davis came in cold, as you mentioned. With these bright lights in this game, yeah. in this city, you knew he was going to snap out of it. Yeah, we've seen him do it at the rim from three. Transition, you name it. But right now, if I'm Auburn, you know, he, he's got a bum leg. He's limping a little bit. I'd like to see them attack and try to make three guard. Drive and kick. Open three from the corner. Treyor can't connect. 6'10 freshman out of France by way of the state of Arizona. One of the top recruits out of that part of the country. Johnson had the steal, but stepped out of bounds. Otherwise, Auburn was off to the races. Sign me up for this matchup every year, right? I mean these two programs with the excitement that they play with With the athleticism on both sides and this year a culture of winning For Memphis off that NCAA Tournament run a year ago. And of course Auburn's had that for a while now under head coach Bruce Pearl Strong take no and a rebound torn away by Moore Tigers on the attack. It's Johnson. Dipsy do high off the window off the mark Look out here comes Kendrick Davis in the open floor Davis crossover Davis wheeling dealing that one might have been blocked But the follow is there by McCabe And I love the aggressiveness you push it in transition It's so hard to come by good shots and points in the half court You've got to be opportunistic as Davis was there 7-0 run for Memphis in the last buck 50 Deep three on the way. In and out that time for Green. Davis just kind of glides, puts defenders on skates. Around the ball screen, splits the double. What a feed and a finish well, by when, Kennedy. When you help uphill like that, and a terrific job cutting by Kennedy, not just staying content at the three-point line. Beautiful read. Is there any doubt his game translates to the next level? Yes. Oh, no. I mean, uh, Davis, those guys, it, it's so hard to stay in front of them. And you've got to bring help all the time. Johnson, pump fake, now pulls up for the mid-range. K.D. Johnson stops the run. Memphis had its biggest lead. Now it's back down to six. Final 60 seconds of a very entertaining first half here from Atlanta. Tavis again just slicing and dicing, sets up another shooter. Offensive rebound for the Tigers of Memphis. He just cleared out again. He's gotten so good, so many good looks for this Memphis team just by penetrating. Davis, look at that. Shaking, baking, but that time walking. He thinks he had them. Left pivot foot clamped down on the floor, but the officials say no. Well, good job by Moore holding his position there. That's being on an island against one of the best ball handlers. And here's a pre previous possession where he dribbles in. The help came pretty early. That's just too easy of a read for Davis and Johnson, who's been so good just in this game. I've been so impressed with his conditioning. He always went hard, but man, everybody else right now is huffing and puffing. This guy lost 15 pounds in the offseason. He's ready to go to full 40. Five second differential, game clock to shot clock. Johnson with seven to shoot, hounded by Davis. 
Deep three on the way. Flying in for the rebound. KO. Here comes Memphis. Two seconds, one seconds. Who else but Davis? That time off the mark. And that is how an energetic and sometimes frenetic first half comes to a close. 38 30. Hey, but it's the confidence. He did it as respectfully as he could. We talked to Penny about it as well. He said, look, it's a teachable moment. Say, hey, we don't want a bulletin board material material for the other team, but that's what's made him so great. He is fearless. And he doesn't care who he's going up against. He's going to respect his opponent and fear nobody. That was before the St. Louis game, by the way, a game in which they won 65 to 60. Lomax, one of four players with three fouls, misfires on the first shot. By the way, they need some t-shirts being sold to Memphis with his face, and I'm, I'm a bad. <laughs> Somewhere Samuel Jackson of Pulp Fiction fame is smiling. But And that does. That's how you embrace the... In Memphis, they, they want to see grinders. They want to see tough guys. Uh, Zach Randolph was a guy that wasn't from Memphis, but he became one of the most beloved Grizzlies of all time because of that chip on his shoulder. Now, if you're Auburn now, you're down six as Hardaway launches a three. Uh, the one number that just kind of jumps off the stat sheet, minus 13 on the glass. Yeah. That's going to be a foul on the floor. Uh, going to be goal, goal tennis on the bucket will count. And, and Mike, I think that's one of the most underappreciated things of that first half of Memphis limiting Auburn to just one offensive rebound. And this is an Auburn team that gets 39% of their misses. So. The Tigers doing a terrific job on the glass. Auburn came in number eight in the country in offensive rebounds. You mentioned just one, just one in that first half. Watching the three and delivering is Chris Moore. Well, he's not somebody you say is just a dead-eye shooter, but when he has time to get himself set, get in rhythm, he can be effective. And he's back on the court. And this summer, he was coming off of shin surgery. That sidelined him for 10 to 12 weeks. Had a couple of players that were kind of working their way in, coming off injuries and being a little bit rusty. We talked in the first half about Chance Westry. He missed the first two games in the preseason due to arthroscopic knee surgery. He's still kind of finding his way into the flow. Well, the, the age of the transfer portal, Chris Moore is a great example. A kid from West Memphis, Arkansas, that's waited his turn. And now he's been able to start every game as a junior. Gliding in, left it short, second effort, third effort, and finally ripped down by Janai Broom. And then Alford runs into our table, and then on the other end, it's Alex Lomax. And the water bottles flying everywhere, that was uh, a little chaotic. Uh, plenty of activity there, I and mean, just careless turnover by Auburn. A little bit of pressure from Memphis, and Auburn just did not handle it very well. For the record, Dan Bradshaw was not in position to draw a charge. Not even close. <laughs> it was not. Broom came flying out. They did a good job of holding up for another break. <laughs> I'm not serious. They need Broom to play well in this half. I mean, when you get dominated on the boards, they need four and orange to step up. He looked like two matadors for the bull coming at us. And you still managed to figure out who scored the call. <laughs> Just doing my job. Lomax, excuse me, Davis seeking contact. He got it, but no foul called. Auburn the other way, two on two. Broom wheeling and dealing and got it to go. Janai Broom. And now Memphis just throws it away. Well, he had a guy open, but you talk about overthrowing him. Uh, that, that's an interception in football right there. But this all starts with Death Jasper's defense on Kendrick Davis that leads to Broom being patient down low. And then Memphis had an opportunity for a run out. Just going to connect. You go back to last year, and the Achilles heel for Memphis, for Memphis, no question, was turnovers. 22% of their possessions, they gave it away. Yeah. And they cleaned that up so far this year. They have not cleaned it up in this game. Auburn had a couple of looks at it. Can't get it to go. It'll be Memphis ball. A five-point game. Less than three minutes into the action of the second half. Yep, Bruce Pearl is in postseason form. <laughs> when is he not, huh? That's true. That's true. And, and look, we love every game out there in November, December. But there's certain ones that clearly stand above the rest. This is the kind of game that fans and obviously broadcasters are like, we can't get enough of a, a packed house here at an NBA arena. 
two entertaining teams, one undefeated team. This has been spectacular. And well-coached team. Yes. These guys have scouted one another extremely well. And it, it's not going to be a thing of beauty offensively. You're going to have a lot of plays just like that, where it's just attack, try to draw contact. A lot of times, you're driving to get fouled, not to score the way this game is. That's a foul on Moore. That's his third. This might be a game of attrition by the time we get to the final few minutes of the ball game. It's five players now with three fouls. Two big time po coaches of Benny Hardaway and Bruce Pearl taking different paths, obviously. Benny Hardaway, all star NBA player. I'll tell you one thing they got in common is ticket sales. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Bo took over pretty empty arenas yes. with a hungry fan base. And Memphis had had more recent success than Auburn. But for Auburn to become one of the, if not the most intimidating, intimidating atmosphere in the SEC is unbelievable. Yeah. And I was playing when, or, or even when they go on the road. When you hosted Auburn, mm -hmm. you, you didn't have to pop as much popcorn. Right. Now, you're, they're having red outs, they're checkering the stadium, all this other stuff. And it's because of what Bruce Pearl has built. For a jumper, Zip Jasper, again, not known for his scoring. A defensive juggernaut. They call him the Honey Badger because of his defense. And then Memphis unable to capitalize on the other end. Williams whips it into the wing. Three ball spins out. The rims have been unfriendly here. Got a number of around and outs, halfway down and out. Let's see if Davis can go back to work. Likes the matchup, takes it strong, sneaks it in, driving left, finish with the right. Yeah, that's a really tough play. Again, he does such a good job. His body control is just elite. Most guards get in there, they're out of control. They throw it away, they're jumping off one foot. He's on balance, two feet. He moves like a shutdown corner in football. Yep. Great call. Open three. Flanagan has the green light. Caldwell, one of the better offensive rebounders around. And then a block by Memphis, ahead of the pack. Could be showtime, it is! Two-hand slam for Malcolm Dandridge. Well, Wendell Green can make it from there, but I don't think he should have shot it from there on that one. But Dandridge was right there with the contest. Got a piece of it. I think he underestimated the wingspan of Dandridge. The lead is back to eight for Memphis. Another three, and this time a make. Jalen Williams. Uh, you get the sense Memphis is going to say, Auburn, you're going to have to beat us from three. And Auburn's willing to play that game now, 6 of 19 from deep. But they're still going to have to get some stuff in the paint, go to work on the offensive glass. Pass down low off the bounce, right into the waiting hands of DeAndre Williams. Well, he was a little bit quiet in the first half with those three fouls, but shows you again one of the most versatile players you'll see in college basketball. Well done on that baseline cut. Seven-point ball game. 14 and a half to play here from Atlanta. Green trying to find somebody open. There it is. Jasper left alone. Got it back. Up top, Green. In the lane. Dipsy do Draws the foul, and he got the basket. An and one. The season goes on. Yeah, when it comes down to March, and I don't think either one of these teams will be a bubble team, but in terms of some other things like seeding, this will be a resume builder for somebody. Well, and, and it's almost as if the Memphis Tigers are saying, hey, we're just going to build our resume through the SEC, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, they, 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 uh, they already had Ole Miss, and they've got Auburn right now, and then they go at Alabama. Kendrick Davis is about to introduce himself to the SEC, and then Texas A&M as well. So plenty of resume building opportunities. And if there's anybody I want to see in March, it's Kendrick Davis. I, I mean, he could be one of the stars of that tournament. 17 now for Davis. Again, the transfer from SMU. And he still gives former head coach Tim Jankovic, who's now retired, the former SMU coach, a whole lot of credit for getting his life on track. He was a, a young man that had a, a lot of issues. You see him spotting up for the three here. 
His father was incarcerated. He went to six different elementary schools, had some anger issues, wound up eventually at SMU, and to this day he still says Tim Jankovic is responsible for getting him on track for his ultimate goal, which is the NBA, which certainly seems like a certainty for that young man. Well, just a phenomenal story. I mean, that kid has gone through adversity. He is so tough. And you see it on the court. And then once you hear that story, you see, wow, uh, now I love him even more. All right, Dave, let's talk about this here. It's the largest lead for Memphis. What does Auburn need to do differently? Well, they got to try to get to the rim. There you go. Okay. I mean, right now, this is not an Auburn team. Like some of Bruce Pearl's teams past, that's better from three than two. No, they're better from two than three. But half of their shots in this game have come from long range. That is credit to Memphis. Lomax knifing in, gets the basket. And good job not letting the ball stick. As soon as they got in their hands, they kept swinging it, find the cutters. One other interesting stat or lack thereof for Auburn. They lead the nation in block shots. Memphis has attacked the rim a bunch. Not a single block in this game for Auburn. Uh, no, Memphis is 17 of 24 at the rim. That's unheard of against Auburn. Good take that time by Johnson. In heavy traffic. Memphis on the other end on the attack. Whoa, what a shot that time by McCadden falling on the ground and somehow getting it up at the rim. Well, Bruce Pearl saying, guys, we're getting what we want on offense, but hustle back on defense. Get set up. Can't be trading buckets. Quick hands by Lomax, who dives and almost pulled off a highlight steal. Well, here's the commitment to the paint right now after that timeout where Bruce Pearl says, hey, put your head down and get to the rack. And Katie Johnson can finish through contact. But then on the other end, good job by Memphis pushing it even after a mate. I mean, a lot of teams push it after a miss. That time, they catch Auburn off guard. Dandridge on the floor for Memphis with four fouls. We mentioned that'll be a factor later in this game. Right now, Auburn just needs to find baskets to keep it close. Turnaround baseline jumper. Silky smooth from Dylan Cardwell. Well, you'll, you'll take it if you're Bruce Pearl. That's not your bread and butter, but it went in. Now you just got to follow it up with a stop. Try to get some momentum, and here's this home crowd on the neutral court for the Auburn Tigers. Yeah, it's, it's semi-neutral. There's definitely more Auburn fans in the building, and they've gotten loud right here. Three seconds. One second. Davis got it at the buzzer. Kendrick Davis continues to shine. I said it before. I'll say it again. He's got a bag on him that can't fit in the overhead. Man, you got to check that sucker in. This dude's a wizard with the ball. 19 for Davis to lead all scores. You knew late clock situation. It was going to come down to him. Pass down low. Cardwell kicks it out, shots it on a three. Offensive rebound, Auburn, and a foul as Chris Moore ran out of juice at the rim, but he was hacked. He'll have two free throws when we return. Shots have led to inside rebounds, those second chance opportunities. But this is an Auburn team, again, top shot blocking team in the country. They got multiple guys averaging about three blocks a game, and they just have not been able to deter Memphis at all at the rim. Chris Moore. Rips the Nets on the first one. He's got nine points for Auburn. Been a couple of guys this game, Dane, that have been quiet that I, I would have expected a little bit more from, including Yoan Traylor. Yeah. Not just scoring, but but really on both ends of the floor. He's been a most mostly a non-factor so far. Well, I think the other part that's hurt Auburn's offense goes back to the lack of blocks. I mean, that's yeah. stuff that ignites the fast break, that gets them going as opposed to them just being a half-court team, right? And so it's that complimentary basketball just hasn't been there so far in this game. Again, they lead the country with over eight blocks a game. They have not rejected a shot in this game, and Memphis has lived at the rim, and they live at the rim here. A foul called going for the block was Cardwell, but again, an aggressive DeAndre Williams on the attack. DeAndre Williams, let me tell you something. Needing this pass, otherwise this would be a turnover, but he's aggressive. He catches that through contact. He got fouled once or twice right there, but I'm telling you, you go soft after that ball, you don't meet the pass and help the passer out a little bit, that's going to be two points momentum offer. 
In a game that very often has some 18-year-olds on the floor, DeAndre Williams, kind of the Thornton Mellon of college basketball, for those of you who are fans of back to school and Rodney Dangerfield, 26 years old. Memphis came into this season with a combined 878 games on their opening day roster. My man loves this early tip. He's ready to get to bed. <laughs> He's got bedtime at nine if he's anything like me. Everybody else flipping through Instagram. He's at the team meal having coffee. Read, reading the Wall Street Journal. Taking a look at his 401k. <laughs> Auburn with the basketball coming up on the 10 minute mark. Memphis up by nine. But I like that they've shown some of this zone throughout the game to just keep Auburn off guard a little bit, guessing what they're going to be in defensively. Westry, the freshman, puts a dent in the backboard on that one. Williams ahead of the pack, bobbled it, collects it, got it to drop. You're right. I mean, a, a miss like that is almost like a turnover. And there's another one. And Westry is going to be such a good player at such a great foreign tour. But after that knee procedure, he, he's just been out of sync. Yeah. And this is a tough game for a young freshman that's not 100% healthy. So this is where it is. I mean, a, a brick is basically a turnover. And when your teammates aren't expecting you to take it, and if you are, they're expecting it to hit the rim, that, that might as well be live ball turnover. And we might have yeah, the bench for Auburn has been warned My bench warning no technical foul with a bench warning and Bruce realizes I mean even though there's 950 to go that's an eternity so this is a little bit of a danger zone spot if you're Auburn, that'll help with a steal from Flanagan yeah, they've had some success with their full court pressure they just haven't been able to get in it much and again can't find it from close range and then a foul in the backcourt and that frustration is starting to boil over for Auburn on both ends of the floor. I'm not sure Flannan get, didn't get hit. Like, I, I don't see him getting that close and missing that wide right. And I don't know if it was partially blocked. But both he and Bruce Pearl thought there was contact. Oh. Well, you had an Auburn player line up on the baseline. But it is Memphis basketball. The foul was given to West to Westry, that's his third. Lomax racing in the front court. Follow-up slam is no good from Williams, but Memphis will get a third crack at it. The second chance opportunities just really preventing Auburn from getting anything going and able to get consecutive stops. 14 offensive rebounds for Memphis in this game. That's been the difference. Tough shot that time by Davis. Green on a blow by. There's a miss on the finish. So oh, he does not miss that one often. Three on two. Davis can't get it to fall. Auburn on the other end. Back and forth we go. Johnson dribbles off the foot of a defender. It's not a kick. Cardwell. That is a block foul. And that is a break for Auburn because this thing is starting to get. A little bit out of hand for Auburn. Memphis has got everything going in the right direction and leads by 11. Well, a couple missed opportunities for both teams. I thought Wendell Green did a great job with his hesitation on the pull-up three to get to the rack. But then Memphis had a chance to really capitalize and extend this lead. It's a layup of their own. So a lot of back and forth. It's the old quote, don't mistake activity for production. Right. right. <laughs> on full display there. I feel like I keep asking you the, the same question and the answer probably hasn't changed but wh where does Auburn go for the offense? What changes here in the final eight minutes and change? Yeah, well, they're, they're getting some of the zone right now and you'd like to get a paint touch and get inside out but you know if, if Memphis is gonna be this dedicated to make the Auburn beat them from the outside with the green those guys are gonna have to catch a little bit fire but Really, it's got to start on the defensive end. They, they could be as frustrated as they want the half court, mm -hmm. but the answer is getting a stop on this end and pushing in transition, get to the free throw line. Let's see if they can get a stop here. With Davis going to work on Johnson. Davis, one crossover after another. Just a yo yo dribble. And then a cutting and flying. DeAndre Williams gets Memphis its largest lead. And that's due to the attention that Davis gets. I mean, he's got all. On him, so when he does penetrate just a little bit in that quick snap back pass, good read by Williams. I don't know what's more impressive. How about the defense? How about the finish on the other end by Kendrick Davis? Timeout Auburn. It has
has been the Kendrick Davis show here. From the offensive end, the defensive end, and Mike, as much as the ball has been in his hands, rarely have you seen him take a bad shot or a questionable shot. I mean, he could he can get wherever he wants, whenever he wants, but the balance he's played with of getting his teammates involved, himself involved, and then also handling the pressure from Auburn has been just outstanding in this game. It never feels like he's out of control. Nope, you're exactly right. He's got the speed, but he does it under control. Nice job knifing in for the offensive rebound and stick back by Broom. Auburn could use a few more of those type of easy baskets down by 13. And a great two-man game between Davis and Williams. Here they are again. Davis pulls the trigger. Can't find it. Flanagan flying in on the rebound. Here comes Green. Open man is Johnson. Left that one way short. And a jump ball. Nothing. No. Now Memphis off and running. Here come the Gazelles. Yeah, the basket. Nope. Tip in good, though. You had four great jerseys just flying to the rim. Room inside. Yes, and an one. Boy, did Auburn need that. A good kick ahead pass by Green there. I mean, it was helter skelter. Bodies were flying everywhere, but Auburn trying to figure out a way to score consistently. Good kick ahead historically uh, against Houston. And so right now they're going to close this one out against Auburn. Important free throw here. I think Auburn would really like to get set up in a full court press if they can't create some turnovers. And Broom knocks it down, and there is the full court press right on cue. Haven't had a chance to see much of this from Auburn today. Here's a good guy to break it, Davis and Lomax. You got two guys terrific at the basketball to break any type of pressure. Kennedy up top to Hardaway. Angles it in to Williams. And off Davis. Davis on the attack draws the foul. And the whistle will be against Jasper. And what a luxury for Penny Hardaway to have. When you're trying to maintain a lead and you want to go deep in the clock, you run some stuff, kind of some window dressing, and to have somebody like Kendrick, Kendrick Davis and Williams to do a little two-man game with late clock, which is one of the best options you can have, you know you're going to get something good late. You know, guys that are 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, that can attack the rim and finish well don't impress me nearly as much as a guy like this who does it at six feet a buck 75. top rank boxing tonight highlighted by former unified lightweight champ tiafimo lopez taking on sandor martin in the junior welterweight main event lopez is looking to take over the 140 pound division coverage of the main card beginning at nine o'clock eastern on espn Memphis lead back up to 14, 71, 57 our score. Six minutes remaining here in Atlanta. We haven't said Alex Lomax's name much, but I think he's done a really good job when he's been in of denying Wendell Green the ball back. They have kept him out of the offense for the most part in half court. Green has been relatively quiet, just six points. Nine points now for Broom, and it's a 12-point game. Nine in the second half for Broom make that, and 11 total. And now an offensive foul on Memphis, trying to crack that door open. The question now becomes, can Auburn slam through it? Well, it had to start with at least a stop. Forget consecutive stops. They got to get the first one, and here they are. Good job. There by Jasper, whose on-ball defense is, is one of the best in the country. Now, a lot of people talk about 12 and orange, but let me tell you something. There's not a, another person that can put the ball pressure on you like 12 can. You don't earn it, earn the nickname Honey Badger for nothing. Alley, you pass no. Tap around and a foul down low. That last foul, by the way, on Memphis, on Williams, that is his fourth. Yep. And we've been telling you that at some point that is going to become an issue. The question is, will it still be within range for Auburn when it does? Dandridge already fouled out of this game for Memphis. Well, this is what you want if you're Auburn, right? Get some of those, even though it wasn't pretty, it was off a deflection. Just keep 
the inside shots leading to some inside rebounds get to the free throw line slow this game down a little bit and the uglier it is I think the better for Auburn at this point Memphis is in too good of a rhythm right now transfer from Moorhead State Janai Broom the Ohio Valley Conference defensive player of the year a lot of people are going after this guy yeah and, and Bruce was quick to credit assistant coach Stephen Pearl of, of lead the charge on this recruitment effort and you know, they, they had a lot of big shoes to fill literally and figuratively with guys like Walker Kessler 36 career double doubles however an 0 for 2 at the line in a key spot that would have made him a 10-point game goes for the steal. Yeah, they, they've got to be solid. And Wendell Green's mad at his teammate because it's it's not yet time to just start gambling. Uh, I think you can still inch your way back into this game with traditional stops as opposed to reaching. Low max to Williams. What a game he's had. Williams still on the attack. Williams high off the window and in. 16 points for DeAndre Williams to go along with 11 rebounds and a double-double performance. Green looking for somebody. Launches one from way downtown. I gotta tell you that you know that it, that over two at the free throw line by Broom, yeah. not being able to convert there, not getting a stop on the other end, got Auburn quickly into that desperation mode where you see a heave that Wendell Green really had taken that type of contested look very often in this game. Man, I, I've been balling since you were crawling. Yeah, <laughs> and, 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 and learn a few lessons from me. And to give you an idea how long DeAndre Williams has been around. When he was at Evansville, remember years ago, Evansville upset Kentucky with Walter McCarty. That feels like five years yeah. ago, but he was on that team, 26 years of age, and to give you an idea of his impact, 40 and 13 with him, 7 and 7 without him over the last year and a half. But he gets the foul there, and that will be number five. So yeah. after that great summaration... Yeah. Glad we got in while we could. I, right? I mean, <laughs> but again, that goes back to me, the, the defense of Jasper. And, and unless Auburn can put together a run, it, it's going to be in a losing effort for Jasper. But you, you got one of the smallest guys on the court that baited Williams into that. I mean, he held his ground, and he made Williams get into a fight down low that he had no business being in. He could have just turned around and shot over him. Instead, he, he's going to get the displacement foul right here. Jasper again. Boy, is he good. Third double double of the year, by the way, for DeAndre Williams. And really, it, it's been the Williams Kendrick Davis show in this game for Memphis. Not as if they haven't had help, but those two have really stood out in this game. I mean, it's a really tough game to even get your average in, and they've been able to do that and then some. Under four minutes to go, a 14 point lead for Memphis. Where does the ball go? Well, I think you still want to end up in Wendell Green's hands, but it's been so tough to get it back to him. Nice tip in that time by Carwell. Bill and Carwell flying in and tapping it in. You and I were talking over the break last year when Auburn would hit any type of slump or needed a big shot. You just gave it to Jafari Smith, the lottery pick. You don't have that kind of weapon this year. You got some good defense, though. There's a block shot. They do lead the nation in that category. And Green almost an and one. He'll go to the line for a pair. And they've missed some opportunities at the rim. When they've gotten there, they just have not converted as consistently as they'd like to. Terrific drive there. You see there's no quit in this Auburn team. They know there's still one last push in them to get a run, try to get this thing to single digits, see if Memphis can't tighten up a little bit. But, of course, it starts with this. And, and yes, I know he got fouled, but this would have been a timely and one as Auburn, not including that one, of course, but it's 7 of 13 on layups. You'd like to be a little bit higher than that. Green, 79% from the line. Swishes the first. And again, you check back in for Auburn. And Williams will take a breather. Maybe Johnson.
on the floor for Auburn. And you get the feeling it's going to have to be a whole lot of KD and Wendell Green. And Penny Hardaway told us, you know, this is a team that can really start scoring in bunches once they get it going, but they've just never really got that other than a couple of spurts in the first half. See if they have one push in them. And Memphis is really executed with their defensive game plan for the two. Need a run. Davis. All the way, return to sender. The block by Cardwell. Let's see if that ignites the break for Auburn. Johnson takes it strong, hammered. He'll have two free throws coming up. And the Auburn faithful come alive. I told you they weren't done. I credit KD Johnson here. We have not seen Kendrick Davis get sped up or take a shot that he didn't want to take. But he felt like he had the defender on his back, and they baited him going into the help of Dylan Cardwell with a terrific block. And then there's your boy, KD Johnson. There's no quitting this guy. Johnson is an 82% free throw shooter. Gets a friendly bounce. You know, Mike, before that play, we almost forgot about how many more Auburn fans are here instead of yeah. I mean, that's another credit to Penny Hardaway. We look at this as a neutral site. Right. But, but you know, it's not quite the jungle, but it still should be home court advantage to a degree with all these Auburn fans, but they've been kept quiet for a large part of this game. At halftime, I went back to grab a refreshment running into Auburn fans from Birmingham, Tennessee, all parts of the southeast coming to this game. Here comes Davis downhill and a whistle with 12 to shoot. That was kind of a double whammy because you commit the foul, but not before 18 valuable seconds come off the clock. But here, here's what I love on that. We get the benefit here with the best seat in the house. <laughs> yeah. Alex Lomack, with his veteran leadership, he was the one sitting there at the top of the key. He was telling Davis, holding up his fingers, go at 15. Go at 15. He knew exactly time, score, situation, and how much time the play needed to develop. And that's how those two have really complimented each other in this Memphis backcourt. The key word there is go. And there's not many players in America that go the way Kendrick Davis does. It's only the 16 foul, so no free throws. 20 on the shot clock, but a chance to bleed more clock if you're Memphis. Oh! Well, Omax will track it down. That looked a little bit precarious the moment it was released. Lomax looking for a ball screen. Gets it. Katie Johnson got his hands on it. Davis with three to shoot. And Johnson stole it. And it'll be Auburn basketball. Now Katie Johnson, not only with the great play, but the IQ. His big man, Cardwell, almost got switched out on Davis. He wasn't going to let it happen. He goes, no, switch back, switch back. It was right before that. And then here's Katie Johnson going to take out a fan with the most vicious high five you've ever seen here. <laughs> My man goes falling down. Well, he'd see a hand specialist after that bad boy. Eight-point game, 2.20 to go. Auburn fans literally on their feet here at State Farm Arena. Johnson missed it. Loose scramble, whistle, and the ball will go to Memphis. And it might have looked like a four shot, but I think that's what's worked best for Auburn is getting in there, forcing the issue, just oh, unable to convert that time. That is a foul on Johnson, just his second. That will send Memphis to the line for a one and one. And good job by McCadden, just not fouling. And then when on the scramble, I think they saw Katie Johnson hit the wrist for McCadden. McCadden in limited free throws, just 38% on the year back iron here comes green eight point game Auburn desperately could use a bucket here green backing in draws the contact and no off 
offensive foul. Chuck Jones says no, sir. Wow, I mean, let's see, Kendrick Davis seems to hold his ground. He doesn't really jump from point A to point B. Needs it just a little bit. But seemed like it was more contact from the offense by Wendell Green. But even before that play, I believe it was Chris Moore that he slipped the ball screen. He popped. I would like to see them set a ball screen, let Wendell Green use it, yeah. see if he can't get open for a three. Because getting in there one-on-one -on -one is too difficult the way we showed it right there. Right. Under two minutes to go. Memphis up by eight. Auburn, one of nine teams in Division I, still undefeated. That streak is on the line. Ball pops out. Auburn's got numbers. Ahead of the pack to the rack and spins out. Chris Moore can't get it to drop. Bruce Pearl is on fire. He wants a foul. And he is red as a tomato. Lomax 80% on the year. Huge free throws. And the guy you want at the line in this spot. Just gonna beg your pardon, Kendrick Davis. The other guy you want. Take your pick, Lomax or Davis. Davis is 88% on the year. Yeah. Davis now with 24 on the game. We'll try to get another look. Well, at that call or no call, yeah, as it were. You understand the frustration from the Auburn bench because the crowd was into it. You're making that last push. You get a bucket that you thought might have could, could have been an AM one, and then you get your easiest two, where they, they just had some layups lip out on them. And Bruce Pearl felt like he had gotten touched. I didn't see the contact there. Maybe his foot at the bottom. That's the only place I could have seen the lower the shoe get clipped up there. Getting tangled up. That'd be the only place to freeze that is, is, is the foot, but I didn't see the hip check. Uh, the complexion of this game just changed dramatically. Right. You had a chance to cut it to six. Now it's ten, and Memphis has the basketball. A minute 20 to play. This would certainly be the biggest victory of the year if Memphis can hold on. Lomax. Finds Davis, five on the shot clock. You know Davis wants this. I mean, you know he's going to fire, and he draws the foul. Got Green to leave his feet. That's just artistic right yeah, there. And you, you just can't teach that either. That's skills, instincts. That's a guy that's just been hooping his whole life, knows how to get the defense up, and they respect every single shot. And so you don't blame Green for trying to contest, and he realizes in the air that he's in trouble and comes down hard on Davis. Who's just been an absolute warrior. I mean, there's some similarities. In, maybe not the exact same, not the crossover, but just an Allen Iverson type, a guy that's just all over the place. You feel like you can give him the ball at any moment in time, and he's going to come up with a bucket. As impressive as this young man is to watch on television, and we've seen him a number of times, to see him in person for the first time. I mean, he is the real deal. And he is an absolute force to be reckoned with, and it'll be a lot of fun to watch in the American all season long. He said he was a bad you-know-what, <laughs> and I'm here to agree with him. You got my vote. No disagreement here. A season-high 27 points for Kendrick Davis. Well, header coming up. It'll be Louisville, Kentucky at 1 Eastern on ESPN. And number 6, UConn battling number 20, Maryland. That'll be at 3 o'clock on ABC. Mike Work and Dane Bradshaw, final minute here in Atlanta, the second of three games. We've got the Clemson Loyola game coming up on the ACC Network for the nightcap at 7.30. Inside, two-hand flush for more, but you're going to have to get stops here in a hurry, either that or a lot of missed free throws. And Lomax finally does get the foul. With 22 on the shot clock, so eight more precious seconds off the clock. Well, and you admire the fight of this Auburn team of trying to come in here and stay undefeated. But it certainly looks like they'll be falling out of that list of unbeaten teams. 
Well, we're going to be down to at least eight. We're going, to, we're going to be down to at least eight teams, and I'm told Missouri is about to lose. So we're going to go from ten to seven. Kind of a bloodbath Saturday for the undefeateds in college basketball. Again, one thing that I think you should come away with, whether you're an Auburn fan or whoever, these are still these are still two very good teams. Memphis today is simply better. Yeah, but I, I think Auburn is only going to get better with time. They've just got to work in some new guys. Yeah, they had Memphis had the best player on the court as well, but I, I don't think it's as simple as hey, they just had a better player. Memphis played their style of play. Mm -hmm. They're not a heavy three-point shooting team. They got 60 attempts on the night. Only 11 of those are from three. They got to the rim, whether it was in transition, on the offensive glass, and that's where they were able to put up 79 points, not yeah. because they were just this poetry in motion on the offensive end. I thought they were able to make Auburn pay in, in multiple ways. Well, they're going to win this in spite of 19 turnovers, which is a season high for Memphis. And again, that's the part of the game that they really want to clean up from last yeah. year to this year. But what I don't think anybody would have predicted is the domination on the glass that you just referenced. Yeah, absolutely. And this was Auburn's toughest test of the season. I mean, and so uh, they were prepared. They had their game plan. Sometimes you just don't execute when you go up against this type of competition for the first time. It can be a little bit of a wake-up call for some of the players. But it does help to have Kendrick Davis. Uh, it definitely <laughs> helps to have that. Yeah. And, and again, Auburn had, a, you know, a different version, obviously, different kind of player in Jabari Smith. But they had a special go-to guy. Yeah. And so when you have other guys that may be struggling offensively, what have you, to have that one guy that you know when you need a bucket, yeah. you're going to him. And at times in this game, we weren't sure where Auburn was, was going to go. Right. And, and the lack of shot blocking that was able to lead them in transition. And so um, I thought I thought Memphis played pretty composed. They, they had some adversity themselves with some unforced errors on the turnovers you mentioned. The foul trouble Lomax had early. Yeah. And let's go back to that. Coaches don't get enough credit for playing their stars with two fouls in the first half. Uh -huh. Penny did with low back. Yes. And he picked up a third. Guess what? He's still finishing the game. Still in the game. So that's my pitch for playing your guys with two. I'm right smart. there with you. Especially a senior like Lomax. A whistle before the pass. That'll be on Memphis with 22.4 on the clock. We kind of summarize the top of the American, right? I mean, everybody's just gonna, all eyes will be on Houston and Memphis. You and I have seen a lot of SEC teams already. What are we looking at there? What do we think is the, the cream of the crop in the Southeastern Conference? Hey, I was ready to give the nod to Arkansas, who, who was able to defeat Oklahoma today. But they did have a big injury, ACL. Trevin Brazil, yeah. who was the Missouri transfer. And they're going to have to try to replace him by committee, but nobody can replace that type of athleticism and shot blocking ability. So um, they're at the top. Uh, you've got Tennessee. I think Auburn, you know, they're still in the conversation. They're probably like, based on this, I would say a little bit of a step down. But, you know, Auburn, is their struggles are similar to uh, Tennessee's, to Kentucky's, in that their defense is so far ahead of their offense. Right? They're really not sure, hey, well, we need a bucket. Who can go get it? So Auburn's problems aren't isolated just Auburn in the top of the SEC. There's other teams that have similar issues. I'll tell you, one offense that has been fun to watch in that league is Alabama. Yep. Nick Smith, a freshman for Arkansas. Ooh, he's healthy. Yes. You got to tune in to when he's playing. Yes. Yes, indeed. Bottled up was Lomax, and there's the whistle with 4.9. I'll say one other thing. I loved our conversation with Penny Hardaway again. He kind of waxed poetic about his, his time at Memphis in the five years and how things have changed. This is one of the few years where they don't have, as of right now, that patented one and done. Yeah. Right? But there's more than one way to win in college basketball. We've seen that. It's not the teams with the most one and dones that are in the Final Four every year. This team relies on veteran leadership and top to bottom ability. And so, in a lot of ways, we use the word calm. That's Penny's word. He's not only calmer, I think he might be more confident about this team. Well, and veterans that have been there. Anybody can have a veteran team these days. Right. A transfer portal, go get a senior, a fifth year guy, whatever you want. But they've got the great mix of Guys that have been there, earned their stripes, then you add somebody in like Kendrick Davis, and now you've got a lot to be optimistic about. As it all, uh, We're going to launch the final time. final shot. It will count, but it'll be for not. Impressive victory on a neutral floor for Memphis. The Tigers improve.